Hi this is Chinmayi and welcome to the Chinmayi show. For a very very long time on my social media handles uh, be it on Instagram uh, or on Twitter and more recently on Instagram we have I mean I have been talking about some issues maybe it would be triggered by a social media post or a comment or uh, maybe a reel or a video that's come up on somebody else's uh, space and sometimes when we discuss about it usually it leads to a flurry of dms that i get and uh, a whole lot of people share their experiences with me so here on through with the support of news minute uh, i hope to be able to Uh, connect with you on uh, through the show uh, experts who might be able to help you with a particular uh, issue on how best to deal with it uh, and how best uh, we can help ourselves out of these situations today we are going to be speaking about stalking the past two weeks this has been uh, a point of discussion uh, on social media especially after the brutal murder of uh, satya who was uh, pushed onto the train tracks by her stalker Satish this has been also extremely tragic for Satya's family since uh, the father uh, also committed uh, suicide after this this is not the first time that we have uh, seen a case uh, with regard to stalking and a subsequent murder so in this really truly difficult terrible tragic situation people have once again started talking about stalking in chennai so what's stalking The dictionary definition of stalking is a person following or watching you over a period of time. Now this could be somebody you know, it could be your friend, an ex-boyfriend, a teacher, a colleague. Um it doesn't really matter if you know the stalker personally. It could even be a neighbor. So it's very important for you to remember that it's you're not at fault especially if you know the stalker in person stalking of course comes in different forms uh, it can be physical stalking it can be cyber stalking cyber stalking is absolutely a completely different uh, topic and we'll talk about it in, uh, on another show today we are going to be speaking about physical stalking i am truly grateful to be having parvati on the show and she is going to be sharing uh with great grit uh her own personal experience with stalking parvati thank you so much for being here today since we are talking about stalking uh today especially with what's transpired in the past uh couple of weeks uh, in chennai especially um you've been very kind and agreed to share your own story and experience with regard to stalking so please tell us thank you so much in may for having me it's uh i guess about maybe 2 years ago or something to talk about this would have been would have seemed absolutely impossible for me because i uh, i was probably at the peak of feeling the fear like in every like on a daily basis every hour every day no matter what i was doing i could feel the fear was palpable uh for me my story basically started many years ago i think uh, at least 10 12 years ago when i just started acting in films and uh there were these two men who would keep turning up at my address and that was a time when like i would have i would have thought okay you know i'm not famous or anything but how do they get my my address and so what started as for me to be looked at you know i'm a, a single woman living in a flat in a uh, you know in a metropolitan city of sorts and um the association had enough problems of me being an actor adukku mele like it this these people showing up on at the gate saying they are in love with me and that i'm in a relationship with them um erotomania to a complete max uh so it was it was very debilitating at the time but at the time at that time i remember the police did come and speak to him and warned him and let him go now that's now in hindsight now that i think about it that could have gone in a very wrong way like these this end could have come at another time thrown acid on my face try to kill me or rape me or anything any of these could have happened probably my luck that 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 didn't happen and i hadn't followed through to make sure an fir was filed and that they did uh, were taken in remand even though i know that it's a bailable it's a bailable thing like if they can bail yeah. themselves out uh, yeah. so i know the law itself is not going to support us the second right. third fourth and fifth time there's been several instances then over the last 12 years since the first incident it's been of several kinds like um from public shaming to facebook live 
calling me um, you know uh, that i'm into prostitution uh, saying those kind of defamatory things and then obviously on another side uh, harassing my parents and my family showing up at my apartment and all of them having a certain sense of entitlement that oh i can do this to her first of all believing that we we are in a relationship and some of them truly believing that oh not just because she's an actress she's a woman she's mine i can have her and these are the these are the by the way the the contents of the messages that i get the voice notes that i used to get no matter how wow. many times you block them uh, then i i remember a cyber crime officer once told me i should message them at least once saying that this is not acceptable that you should Correct. stop yeah and that that is important even in the court of law for me to have oh, shown sure. that i did try to put a stop to it i think the fear that i was talking about 2 years ago came at a time when uh this particular stalker um moved cities uh, after mm. following my instagram story and started sharing and he had no fear of being found out or anything his instagram was open and everything he started sharing uh, instagram dms lavanda like where he is uh, photographs of buildings that look like where i was staying um oh and uh, say and saying that okay i've gotten a job i'll find my way to you so don't worry so it became so much so bad that whenever i was stepping out i would be always looking behind my shoulder because he wasn't hiding himself i knew how he looked and it made me so angry that somebody some man can just make that decision and that's it for me to live in fear today do you think see one of the uh, you know constant uh, you know responses we get from people who say that they're getting stopped is uh, cops don't take them seriously one of the places where this guy showed up and uh, told the security guard that oh she knows me i'm just here to drop off a package and thankfully oh. there was like a video surveillance thing so i i told the security guard to ask the guy to come near the video so i can see and verify who this person is and he mm. kept saying no 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 i i, um, I won't uh, will you let me in or not mildly threatening the security guard and the security guard kitter i told him to take pictures of the car and the car number by this mm. time i almost felt like i'm seasoned to know exactly exactly what evidence to collect and uh, mm. then he he went off he dropped the package and went off and i remember telling the security uh, person that oh, okay i have definitely called the cops uh, they're going to come tomorrow they're going to take our statement mine and yours and the first mm. response that he told me is that uh, madam i don't want to get sucked into this i have two daughters and i don't want to go into station and everything i haven't done anything wrong most of the people are scared of the cops um, right you know i'm not talking about people like me who goes in with an with, with such an understanding of my own right and privilege right i'm talking about people like the security guard who is like i don't know what if there is a false case what if i become like i mean they have zero understanding of exactly what the case is that they are on the right side so it's kind of a long shot to even start believing there might be a change with this case i'm not i'm not trying to sound like a cynic or a pessimist but it takes a long for, what needs to start is to understand that oh, we do have rights and we can go and ask for it and then to then go on to challenge the fact that the law actually basically does nothing to protect us the yeah. one time that i asked them okay so you've now uh, filed an fir um, then i have to go meet the magistrate and give them the you know first like the the entire episode needs to be given in by me and then mm -hmm. maybe 5 years later 10 years later the case might be called that's yeah. what the magistrate was telling me is that you don't expect this to happen anytime soon and then when the date comes the date keeps changing because the other lawyer doesn't show up so basically the legal system is in no way helping us uh find a closure find a space where oh, we will we'll feel safe again but what it does the second time around the first time around when you do file an fir if at all this person tries to attack you assault you or stalk you the next time it becomes non bailable which is why i keep insisting that anybody who is being stalked give the first fir just file right. the report it may not be of any value right now but it will be when they try to repeat it the fact that we have to wait for the offender to repeat their offense for us to feel yeah. safe itself yeah. is one of the worst parts about the stalking yeah. laws yeah i feel the resistance like okay going to the cops telling them this because most of the cops even to me they have said shall i just call and warn the guy i mean the fact that the warning i mean i do not want you to be 
some filmy uncle for me please just do the job as per law like i don't need protection as per okay you know gundaism or anything i i need it to be done properly or as it is the law doesn't protect you but even at least that that part of following through with whatever we do have i just needed to go step by step so i try to tell as many people as possible how it's important for you to file the first report so if if you had to give one singular piece of advice for anybody who believe they are being stalked by the person you would say go file the report and somehow ensure uh, the filing of the fir correct yes um filing of the fir uh, making sure that the police does make that report and that's on is one mm-hmm. of the many things if i do feel like there is a stalker on the loose i know exactly where to store the person's number i have folders on my on my laptop with each person's name as many information i can find of them did i did i spot them at this location or were there instagram chats that came or uh, these are instagram mentions or facebook messages everything mm-hmm. is screenshotted with the date and time and put in a folder i'm saying this might seem like okay do i the people don't have all the time for this but the fact is to entirely depend on the system the police and the uh, you know court to do all of this it may actually not even happen several instances i have seen that the police have done their job in an extraordinary fashion but i st- i do believe that it's because i have gone to them at least five times before that and they cannot afford to mess it up and i know holding my privilege i will make a big news about it if i had to give a singular advice take charge of the situation yourself find as many screenshots photographs evidences as possible speak to other women who have been there are lots of communities what they have done what kind of um, evidences help you and put that forward so that if you feel like in the course of investigation something is missing you get to be a part of it and i do not stop i keep calling the the police the ones who have helped me have constantly informed me okay now we are going to do this now we are going to do that now we are going at this point i think they understand that the information that i get from them is what makes me feel safe okay this is going to be the next step okay they are going to do this now the fact that i have the right to ask this information from the police is something i would love all for all the women to know is that you got to be persistent you have to be it's a pain it's a headache it it makes you feel like there is nobody to fight for you but yeah. we are all we need i need you i need them to know that we are all we need a couple of days ago on my twitter and my instagram handles i had put out a post asking people if they had experience uh, getting stalked and what their story was had they shared with the cops did they tell their parents or their friends and i got a whole lot of tweets i got a lot of dms and on instagram uh, my inbox as usual was flooded one of the things that i did notice was a lot of people that uh, shared their stories the common thread was they were mostly teenagers when they had their first experience of stalking and more often than not the people who had been stalking them may have been around their age group but also they were stalked by grown adults many of them would also be as old as 40 or even uh, in their 50s So the first story I'm going to be reading out I'm not going to be sharing any of their names because I do want to protect their identities. So she says I suppose talking happens to everybody especially women as men think we are weak. When I was over 25 I was working in a place far away from home. The work demanded working in night shifts. One particular rogue learned the pattern of my shifts, how they alternate and everything about my working pattern. Every time I came home after night shifts she used to stand in the corner of the street and follow me until I reached home. I was scared to even tell my parents about it because they might get scared and ask me to leave my job and come home. I consider this is the biggest problem uh, casual stalkers cause uh, apart from them being dangerous. They cost us our jobs and financial independence. one of the things that i constantly hear from girls especially with reporting any of these uh with parents uh leave alone to the cops is as i uh, said earlier curtailing of freedom whatever little agency they have that is also curtailed sometimes the repercussions are very serious where 
parents will say the education will now be stopped it still happens in 2022 in india so here's a story of a 24 year old uh, woman who had been stalked by her own neighbor the neighbor had gotten her number through their uh, apartments common whatsapp group and he would constantly send her weird messages at uh, various times of the day and the night and also peep into the house uh, whenever he felt that the door was open uh she told her husband and uh, the stalker was asked to uh, was made to vacate uh, the complex however uh, the 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 woman's parents ended up blaming her because she was wearing shorts inside the house and she got morally policed by her own parents for this particular experience and this as she said was the worst part on the show today we also have chandra uh, a reputed business journalist who's worked extensively in south india chandra thank you so much for coming on to the show and uh, being really kind uh, to share your experience of being stalked uh, when did it first happen right around the time when i was in the 6th or 7th standard is when i realized that okay boys were showing an interest but you know at that point it did not uh, feel threatening these would be like you know many blank calls on the landline or you know they would just call and play music or they would drop notes in the common letter box in the building and and stuff like that um but i think ninth uh, i mean there were stalkers at different points in my life so one guy followed me you know throughout ninth throughout 10th one boy did it throughout 11th throughout 12th uh, one guy you know used to follow me from my home to the station till i finished college then when i came back from college again from the station to my place uh, throughout my undergrad and um, i think one guy did it you know i mean i think for two years when i was working and this was when i was a journalist and um, you know um, i and the thing is i was too scared to complain to even acknowledge it because um you know uh, 90s and the 2000s were the years when you would hear a lot about acid attacks um yeah. about uh, you know people just hurling acid um if they think you're not acknowledging them or consenting and that was actually my biggest fear i mean it it now when i think about it you know it's very superficial that i did not complain but to me no, then no, i i definitely don't think it's superficial because it's a very real threat in this country uh, of acid attacks or uh, please please don't ever think that was superficial uh, definitely not no because i never filed a formal complaint because i was so scared and i used to be so worried that you know this guy would just come and hurl a bottle of acid if i even acknowledge it in some form so i would just be you know pretend ignorance throughout um be very careful about always moving in crowds not walking alone say on the side path or the footpath using a lot of public transport so i think you know you tend to develop these coping mechanisms to ensure you're as safe as possible right but uh, now that you know especially what's happened in the past couple of weeks with uh, in the in chennai um especially in this case of satya and satish um what would you um you know advice as a journalist now what would you suggest that uh, people who are getting stopped do filing a complaint everything is i mean it's something that you should do and i think what is even more important is for parents to take it seriously you know when you complain to the cops they also need to take it seriously you know they can't just kind of resolve it and think it will become better sometimes unfortunately you have to help yourself nobody is going to help you so whether it's i don't know traveling in groups or you know using public transport i, I don't know I, i don't think the victim should actually be doing all this but yes yeah. i do think uh, cops should be taking it more seriously parents should be taking it more seriously the onus is also on parents of boys who are bringing up these boys to tell them that you know if someone doesn't like you you got to mm. let it go you can't be like this filmy hero who's following her for years and months and doing what not so i think the onus is i think every part of society from parents to enforcement to law to police to the individual herself a while ago this particular post went viral on social media about a guy who took particular glee and joy in actually following a girl uh, in spite of the fact that he knew that she was terrorized by it he said 
it made him happy that that girl somewhere that was walking and he was able to create that fear and every time she looked back and she walked a little faster he would also walk faster and he got nothing out of it except uh, I was just able to strike fear in some girl and I had had my uh, you know power trip for the day. We have another young woman who uh, shared a DM with me saying that she had a serious talking issue while she was working in a company uh, in a South Indian city. Uh, they were in completely different departments, uh, completely different teams, but in the same company and he used to stalk her wherever she went and even though he lived in the other end of the city, he would take the same bus routes, follow her all the way and once he even followed her all the way to her hometown uh, when she had gone for um, festival holidays. He used to maintain an anonymous Twitter account and post how he was stalking her how he bought the same vehicle uh, that she liked, how he had bought two helmets and he would give live updates about how he was just a few feet behind her all the time. I can just imagine how terrifying it would have been. And he would post pictures at the uh, educational institution that she studied, uh, of the educational institution uh, that she studied. And uh, after she saw the Twitter account, she absolutely freaked out and it was very, very creepy how he had documented her. Uh, she approached the company HR with all the evidence to file a formal harassment complaint and the HR asked her if the stalker had physically harmed her in any way. When the woman denied, they said since there was no physical uh, harassment, there is no physical danger, there is no need to follow uh, or uh, follow any due process or file any complaints and he's just following you without bothering you is apparently the word that they said. The woman was not surprisingly absolutely shocked and the stalking became so intrusive that at one point she started fearing that he will end up hurting her. She had to quit her job and move to a different company. The stalking continued for a while after that and anonymous gifts following her to her new company which eventually died down because uh, she also uh, did not respond in any way, form or manner but it still gives her the chills. He was also actively supported by uh, fellow male colleagues in the first company. Someone even told her that stalking is his expression of love and that uh, the, the woman should somehow try to understand him. It is pathetic is what she said. Somehow I think uh, bro, the bro code and uh, I think the, the other men leading such men on not realizing this is truly troublesome and harmful behavior is also part of the problem. This is another really disturbing DM that I had gotten from one of our followers. I'm going to change a couple of uh, details uh, just for safety. This particular person was stalked for seven years. She had to skip, skip classes. She had told her lecturers and the lecturers had said, please ignore the boy and it will die down after some time. She worked in two different South Indian states and after that she was, apply, uh, she was advised to complain at a local, local police station. They had not taken her seriously. Thereafter, she filed a complaint with the National Council for Women, the NCW, and after two whole months, uh, the, the paper was pushed and the local police station was informed. And when the complaint from the NCW came to the local police station, the police were very annoyed that the NCW had sent the sort of a reminder. And uh, the police women uh, again asked this particular woman to forgive and to give a guy, give this guy a chance so that his future shouldn't be ruined, uh, uh, especially this particular paragraph where she says, I was pushed by the women officers there to forgive and give that guy a chance, else his reputation and his family's name would be spoiled. I thought stalking alone was worse, but what I went through at the police station was the worst of all. It was a nightmare. I hope we have more sensitive and empathetic police and officials in our country. In cases of stalking, many families and uh, girls or young women actually file a complaint. However, uh, in most of these cases, cops uh, do this sort of a katta panjayat and uh, arrive at a compromise at the police station itself. Even in this case of uh, Satya where she was murdered by her stalker Satish, uh, Satya's mother who is a cop actually filed a complaint and uh, uh, the first time round she has filed two complaints. In the first time round, the complaint was a minor case of indecent behavior in a public place and he was granted bail on the same day. Uh, in another complaint filed in another police station, the cops had forced a compromise this time and Satya's mother was forced to withdraw 
uh, her complaint and now it has led to Satya getting murdered by Satish and in some way form or the other I definitely believe that the cops who uh, you know forced this compromise and forced Satya's mother to withdraw her complaint are also in some way responsible for this. There was this other DM that I got where uh, this person speaks about a very scary experience in college and for three months a guy had stalked her and uh, because it were, he considered it was very cool because of some movies influence and she said it was such a mental torture she had changed about five numbers and she was very very fearful uh, of him because he would constantly call and he would keep threatening to come home if uh, she didn't pick up finally she had re uh, reported to her uh, college officials uh, then they smiled and uh, said that uh, women should not have mobile at her age somehow uh, she did find the courage to report to her father her father intervened and thereafter the guy stopped however they did not report it and years later uh, she found that it was also in uh, in public platforms the man was uh, accused of a very very serious crime and now uh, you know she felt a little guilty that what if she had found the courage to have gone and reported at that time so women tend to have this feeling of what if I had reported then uh, would it have been different would things have changed um, I definitely think that it's really not on every woman and it's not really her responsibility because we have every day we have repercussions that we face the onus is more or less on us and this this additional blame that women take on themselves especially when they report because most of the times you are uh, you know constantly given this response as what about the man's reputation you will spoil his future what about his family if he is married what about his wife if he has children then what about the children or aged parents or sick parents all of this comes into uh, question but when uh, i would only tell you this if there are many cases that women are not able to speak up uh, and in a lot more cases they are not able to speak up at all okay uh, one of the responses that i have got from uh, i think one particular girl in a dm is that she had this stalker who said that he was highly influenced by this one particular movie and that uh, when the hero can do that why can't i and why is this such a big crime right so uh, we constantly especially when there is a there is a huge crime like this somewhere somehow there is some link to some movie that the criminal says he was, uh, you know, influenced by considering movies and stalking because the way it is also portrayed, courtship itself is uh, portrayed in a very strange manner in our movies. Um, how, I mean, when when both of us are actually a part of the industry, how, what do we do? How can we probably make things better? What do you think? I truly believe within the industry when we do get to hang out, uh, maybe it could be an award show or any other kind of a situation where we are having dinner or some kind of get together. I truly, I, I start noticing how many people have such rave reviews. They are otherwise in every way want to believe that they are very woke and with the times. And then when it's not a public space and when there isn't a camera around, they would rave about a movie which was all about a man insisting that the woman say yes and then follow mm -hmm. them until she is gaslit to believe that oh maybe i do have feelings for, for him or and taking away that agency itself like that fact that the, it's written in such a way that the women don't even believe they have any agency in deciding what they feel mm -hmm. The right. fact that one of one of one of my one of my colleagues uh, that i heard him say that oh i saw this particular film which was a huge success recently. Uh, it's not a Malayalam film or cover, but it's a South Indian film. So now I guess like it can zero, be zeroed in. Um, oh, thank God I could watch that film. Finally, I could relax. There wasn't any kind of like feminist like beacon on there. Like I could just watch and have fun. And it's one of the most misogynistic stalking films that has that's come out recently. And I'm like, yes. so truly in your hearts, you still do believe that men are entitled to this behavior. What we yeah. saw just recently about men climbing the walls of a of a college um, to jump in when when access was denied, just so that they can harass them. They truly believe that a woman, her body, her life, they are entitled to it completely. So we need to look at the content. I keep repeating this like a broken record. I sound sound mostly like that. Is that we need to look at the content and we need to start. We need to stop doing the films 
that are like that and when they release be woke enough publicly to call them out so i think mm-hmm. what we can do is that but the thing is chimay you and i have been doing that but yeah you know, it's like it's like where are the others where are the others who get to discuss all of this probably behind closed doors but never speak about that publicly why because the major stars and heroes still continue to back this up absolutely they get paid they get to go home to, to a house where there is like 15 security guards and uh, they all have women and uh, daughters and everything but it never matters to them what they're putting out in the world and whenever i have spoken about it let, let's say Arjun Reddy or Kabir Singh and all I'm always slammed with the fact that so we cannot show bad men and like please by all means show bad men but show what they're doing is bad do not glorify it do not glorify it and then uh, the winner takes all sort of a thing at the end of uh, it's like the crowning glory right in spite of your uh, bad behavior there is no uh there is no uh, apology the 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 lead the will never the lead man will never say that yes all that i did was wrong and now i'm a changed man there is no such thing like that there is no redressal of that bad behavior but somehow despite all my failings you have accepted me so you are this uh, sanskari sanskriti sati savitri who will accept me dis- despite my failings so somewhere i think uh, men feel also privileged to that sort of a uh, uh, so called happy ending in their own lives absolutely like the fact that women ought to be fixing men is another another thing that it leads to or it sprouts from like men are these projects and like school like women are the schools that these you know broken men come to so we end up fixing them is another core theme to all these films uh, either through sex marriage or having kids or having succumb to the stalking is how women ought to be holding space for men is still unfortunately something that is rampant in the main popular culture um so we need to scan lyrics we need to scan content we need to scan uh, behaviors of the stakeholders who are at the highest positions who can make a change uh at some point see jime you and i will never stop talking about it uh, there is absolutely no way but at yeah. some point it's time also to call out those who offend sitters in in our own profession who do absolutely nothing thereby add to the majority which actually supports these kind of uh, notions and concepts but i think that's the thing about fence sitters now even though you keep repeating uh, that when when you are silent in the face of oppression you have already sided with the oppressor i don't think they they get it they like what's this all who who ha about you guys are the same voices saying but we don't want to be the same voices right it's not as if we want to carry the beacon we'd love for others to speak up as well yeah yeah absolutely it's just that i mean for for me to hear one more person say that they are apolitical when a woman's life is at stake and they be, we are we are being killed at this point i mean we've been killed forever we are at the at the receiving end no matter what happens war happens political crisis happens anything happens women have to be taking the brunt of it so yeah. the fact that more of us are being killed i think we need to see lesser patience of sorts that we see around like the kind of spaces held for producers directors and heroes who think storytelling is about oh let's also tell this bad man's version of thing just understanding how many of the, the people the, like the, the like the uh, the man who killed um, satpriya yeah. it's so important to understand that there is no guilt there is no remorse there there is only and there's confusion like i did what is what i should be doing she didn't say yes to me so she shouldn't be living that becomes common sense to people is something that is driven in by this art form also not just the art yeah. form but definitely has one of the biggest impacts absolutely um, so here here's hoping that we get to keep our own kind accountable within this industry but yeah let's not lose hope Thank you so much Pavati I I really really appreciate and I am truly grateful that you shared your story it takes a lot of uh, strength and guts thank you so much for your kindness and uh, for standing up for other survivors thank you so what are your rights and what can you do uh, if you're being uh, stalked or harassed and what is a procedure that cops can follow 
Today we are joined by the co-founder of the International Foundation for Crime Prevention and Victim Care, also known as PCVC. This is an organization that's wonderful and it's based out of Chennai. We are joined by the co-founder of PCVC, Dr. Prasanna Gettu. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for joining us today. We have a couple of uh, questions that uh, we definitely want your help uh, so what should a girl or a woman do if you if uh, they think they are being harassed i think first is to uh, immediately talk to somebody at home or a close friend and uh, some trusted uh, uh, friend or a co-employee or somebody i think that's i would say is the first thing and then uh, take it up to the police that that should be your uh, because you do need a support system so I wouldn't say right. immediately to contact the police. And also, uh, one is the support system. The other is police have various channels. Hmm. Okay, many times we think that, okay, I am scared to go to the police station. But police station, contacting the police or connecting with the police is not, only channel is not going there directly. Okay, mm -hmm. so they can call 100, they can call other helplines like 181 also, which will connect you to... Uh, the police, so there are various channels also which make it more uh, uh, easy and supportive to reach out to the police. And the okay. Kavalan app is also there. I should mention that. The Kavalan app. Uh, all right. So uh, this is an app that we all can download into our uh, onto our smart smartphones, and there is an emergency button that we can uh, press down upon if we feel that we are in danger. Right, ma'am? Yes. Yes. And call 100 and uh, my experience has been they are there in uh, less than five minutes. Uh, Ma'am, how do we actually deal in situations where they, even if we have somehow found the support from our family system uh, and otherwise we go to the cops and then they tell us that, you know, don't file a case because his reputation will be ruined. What about his future? Uh, and then in cases like this, it ends in the death of the girl as well. And sometimes, you know, when uh, the stalker threatens that, you know, I will, uh, you know, murder you or I'll throw acid on your face, those are actually real threats that can be carried out in a country like India. So, what can be done in situations like that? See, one is that uh, awareness and knowledge that a victim or a survivor should have. This is what you need to expect from the police. It is your right to tell, say that you are going through this and that you want an FIR filed. Okay, there is no space for uh, counseling here. There is no space for negotiation here. Right. Only space is what I told you is for supportive counseling, which means that they have to uh, stand by her to tell her what sections will be filed to give her all the information. It is her right to know which sections you are using and what is it? Is it uh, uh, in line with what is happening to her? That is the information you need. Okay, and if she has fears of retaliation, they have to clarify that they have to stand by her. Uh, you know, I had posted about this on my social media and uh, a lot of the girls and young women who had responded to me said, you know, they had, uh, some of them uh, were either scared of uh, speaking to their parents about it or some of them who had uh, told their family were in return victim blamed. They were shamed for the choice of uh, clothes and appearance or how they spoke or dressed or how they went out. So one of the reasons that they also said that they were afraid of speaking to their parents was whatever little agency that they have and their financial independence would be curtailed, that they would be asked to quit their jobs. In this case, uh, in some cases, they were also blamed for leading the boys on, uh, saying it was your fault if this person was stalking you. So if this is the case, what can the girls do and what would you uh, advise uh, parents in general? Yeah. See, uh, I see that uh, very often cases come to us when uh, they bring the evidence on uh, the digital abuse evidence, like, you know, somebody is talking them on uh, their Facebook or sending messages and they are so scared to, uh, you know, talk to their parents about it. Okay, because mm -hmm. like you said uh, very rightly that uh, their education will be stopped because for parents, uh, life is more important and that is what reality has shown them. Okay, even yeah. uh, incident like uh, the recent incident that happened, we don't know the hundreds of girls who have been uh, stopped from continuing their work or their education. Yeah. And yes. hundreds of them who have been forced to get married. Because yeah. for parents, safety means 
uh, you know, uh, get, getting them married so that uh, uh, there's somebody that takes care of them and uh, protects them. And uh, believe me, they have been, the cyber police have been, cyber crime cell has been so supportive with some cases that we have taken. When we tell them not to inform the family, they haven't informed the family because she's yes. a major. Okay. Yes. So most of them, there are several myths that are there. Okay, that yeah. prevent uh, girls or young women from going to the police. If, if there is, uh, in general, uh, if there, were, if I had to give you a question, that what more can be done to prevent uh, stalking? Uh, I know this is like this is a very loaded question. There can be, uh, it can be like a really long answer as well. But if, if is there in general how you know we are raised as a society? Uh, children are raised from the time that we are in school. And our uh, general comfort level with uh, people of the uh, opposite gender, uh, especially in uh, straight, heterosexual, um, cisgender relationships. Do you think all of this contributes to um, these, uh, to what has become of stalking today? See, I always believe it's very easy for me to say that uh, the government is responsible or, uh, uh, you know, this uh, police is responsible. But doesn't it lie in our own family lives okay where are these mm. children brought up okay mm. always comes to my mind about that one case that i happened to speak to the acid that uh, acid attack perpetrator where he said mm. that there's never been a note to me at home even when there is uh, food and i uh, when food is served to me and my sister and there is no vegetable or i want more vegetable my mother would take it from my sister's plate and give it to me Okay, there is never a note that he has heard. Okay, and uh, we and when uh, boys are brought up not equally but as very spe within quote special in that yeah. way, they want to be treated like that throughout their lives. Okay, and when they grow up and they have uh, girlfriends, for example, uh, they mm. want they cannot take a no from the person. Okay, rejection is something that is very hard for them to take. When yeah. we are able to teach these to girls and when the girls are so resilient, they are able to, uh, they have such high tolerance level uh, where they are not even complaining, but they tolerate the violence to, uh, to a very large extent. Yeah. Uh, aren't we doing injustice here? Okay, on one way we are telling girls that, okay, this is how you should not, uh, uh, you know, uh, so-called back answer. You should not say no. You know, you, you have to give in, you have to be nurturing, you have to be forgiving. And on the other side, you're telling, uh, uh, boy, you know, young boys that uh, they have to get everything because they are very important. I also want to give us, uh, give the uh, helpline that we have. It's a yes, toll free sir. line 1-800-102-7282. And do not hesitate to call us. And, uh, uh, you know, we promise to give all the support we can. I just want to end this show on a positive note, despite all the stories that we have heard on the show of uh, uh, women and girls developing different coping mechanisms, trying to ignore, feigning ignorance, pretending as if they are not able to hear or see what's going on, uh, scared of reporting to their own parents, leave alone to the cops and even if they go, do go to the cops, the, uh, the difficult time that they do face, despite all of that, I still do want to end this uh, show on a positive note of this particular story where a teenage girl was being stalked and harassed by a man who went to the same gym as her mother. He was an instructor of sorts, uh, according to her. She told her mother that she was being stalked by this man. And uh, what's even more heartening is that her neighbors, the local grocery store, everybody chipped in and made sure that the guy never stalked or harassed her further. Sometimes community, uh, uh, you know, support, uh, the support of your neighbors, the support of your, uh, uh, you know, the entire support system, your family and your friends, all of this is very important for us, um, you know, to feel safe. And if only each of us had that sort of a support system, had that sort of a family, had that sort of a friend group where we could all just bank on and, uh, you know, made to feel safe, that would be, I think, the, uh, the most ideal um, world, hopefully a world where we are all safe and we actually don't have to worry about all of this. As I sign off, I'm going to be requesting you to watch this show, uh, support independent journalism, subscribe to the News Minute and uh, continue liking, sharing and subscribing. I'll see you the next time.